Welcome to the Great American Collectible Show. Heard Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern on PSACard.com and the PSA Facebook page. The Great American Collectible Show is brought to you by PSA and the National Sports Collectors Convention. Tonight's headlines are brought to you by Sports Collectors Daily. For all of your hobby news, features, and more, visit sportscollectorsdaily.com. And now, your hosts, Tom Zappala and Rico Petroselli. So, um, how much did those cigars cost you? Well, I'm not telling you. No, no, you bought them. I was ve- I was thrilled that you bought the cigars. How much did they cost? I bought you? five cigars. Three bucks each. Sixty bucks total for the five. Yep. One was a Monte Cristo. I you got me one too. There was two Monte Cristos. Well, the, right there, that's a it's a lot of money. But uh, of course, we were uh, withdrawing, so we had to do. This is in Cleveland, by the way. The, the great national show. Was Man, fabulous. what a blast! What a oh, blast! Cool. We everything kind of came together for us. Yeah. Well, for everybody. I mean, er- I think everyone enjoyed it. Everybody's excellent. Yeah, By the I, way, uh, we talked about losing weight, folks, at the National. I'm on a diet. All right, no, no. I'm interrupting you. You were what? miserable. I was miserable? You were totally miserable. How many times did I go to the bathroom? 700 times during the course of the day you went to the bathroom. But I didn't, you know, one thing about losing weight I didn't realize, you lose your, you lose your weight on your head, too. Yeah, your head, yeah. Wait a minute. The hats. Oh, yeah. Look, look. Yeah, that hair used to fit me, but it's not my hair. <laughs> All right, listen, we got a we got Seriously. a jam packed show tonight. We're kind of excited about it. Number one, we we witnessed some some history this this week. But let's go through the headlines first. That's a good idea. Oh wow, look at this! A 1955 Bowman fellow pack steals a show at the National Sports Collectors Convention. It was a seal. It was sealed at the Bowman Gum Company's Philadelphia plant 63 years ago. And stayed that way until Friday afternoon. A 1955 Bowman 20 card cello pack, now valued at somewhere around $10,000, that's what the pack was uh, valued at, was opened on the main stage at the National Sports Collectors Convention. Leighton Sheldon purchased a pack from a longtime dealer. His hope was to sell the spots, spots for his new venture, vintagebreaks.com. He sold the spots for 500 bucks a piece. This year's national provided the perfect backdrop. And Friday afternoon, he, Something. along with Rico Petroselli and Tom Zappler, the host of the Great American Collectibles show on stage, conducted the break. And guess what? Uh, we popped some cards. There was a Ernie Banks. Everybody was good. It was great. And as we came to the second last card... A roar, I repeat, a roar went through the crowd. Uh, Leighton yelled so hard. He I thought, swore, by the way. I, I, I know. Well, I, I don't know, but I was so hard, I think I broke, he broke both my eardrums. Well, he everybody really went sad. berserk, out popped a 1955 Mickey Mantle card. Maryland resi- resident Chris Roth was the lucky collector. He had spot number 19 in the random break draw, and he now owns one of the hobby's current most famous cards. On Saturday night, ESPN reported, uh, reported that Sheldon had received a $50,000 offer for Roth's card. You know what I told Chris yesterday? Hold out, baby. Hold out. You're going to get more. Anyway, we are going to have Chris Roth in about 20 minutes joining us. Leighton is, is going to be co-hosting with us. We're going to talk about the, the national. We're going to talk about the card. We had a blast. Uh, it was great. And remember, oh, by the way, those are our hobby headlines for hobby news features and much more. Visit sportscollectorsdaily.com. Our friend Rich Miller. We didn't even get to see Mitch. No. Didn't even get to see him. Do we have Mr. Brogy? Yes, we do. All right. Oh, great. Bring John in. First, we're going to talk to John Brogy, executive director of what I think was the best national that I've attended. Ellen and I have uh, been attending it for about 10 years. I think this was the best, Rico. We oh, had a blast. But, John, are you there? I'm there. How are you guys? Good, good, good. We're, we're so thrilled you're with us. But for our listeners and for our viewers, I'm going to hold up this book. It's starting to get mold on it. <laughs> Because for four weeks now, I've been trying to give this book away. It's called Long Ball, the Summer of 75. It's about the 75 World Series 
signed by one Rico Petroselli. All you have to do is guess who was the one of the 56 players that Rico played with. Just guess who it is. You got a f- one All of the 50- famers. I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you breaks. We went through like three trivia questions and filled them out and gave away things. I'm holding firm in this one. Now yeah. I'm getting stubborn. <laughs> the answer is right in here. Just guess who the hell the Hall of Famer was. And you win. Very simple. You win. Yeah, it's a good book. I'll give you way. three guesses each. How's well, that? Uh, it is a very good book. And. Uh, it's not only you, Red Sox, but it leads up to, uh, you know, Cincinnati, of course, the World Series. <laughs> Eric Pugh says Butch Hobson. <laughs> Come so, on. Sorry. They say, they're mocking you. That's so, one, sorry, that's Eric. That's one answer. <laughs> sorry, Eric, you lose. It's not Butch. Butch, <laughs> Butch Hobson. And John, I was pressed to come up with a trivia question on the spot, and I came up with an excellent one. John, do you remember You remember Butch Hobson? I absolutely do. So when, when Butch, in 1978, when he took over third base from one Rico Petroselli for the Red Sox, he had bone chips in his elbow. Yeah. And when he, remember when he used to make the throw to first? Yeah, 15 fans were injured on the first he base killed, side. He killed two yeah. ushers. <laughs> <laughs> no, he usually threw the ball in the dirt or wide, but he never really threw it hard. The poor guy, he That's had, why the screens are up on the dugout. <laughs> <laughs> never sit behind first base, right? Exactly. All right, listen, let's talk to Just John. Me, John, boy. John, I, I got to tell you, man, we had a blast. And I, the, the, just the response, the, the emails, the, the text, the, the comments we had about the National. Is it my imagination, or was this one right up there with the best? No, I, th- I think you're absolutely right. Um, we didn't actually expect it going in, but the advanced ticket sales were, were through the roof, and uh, Cleveland just came out and wanted to be at the show. Uh, I think the, the mm. venue was beautiful. They had a lot of bright signs and lights, which helped yeah. the atmosphere. And then we had so many things going on. Uh, you guys being there, Dick Fosbury being there, the autograph pavilion. It was just, it was just a place to be last last week in Cleveland. We had a blast. By the way, we're having Foz on next week. Uh, great, He's a nice guy. Great nice guy. guy. We had we had a nice time with him. You know, I I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big track guy. But when I told my son, who was you know, he was a track guy in high school, yeah, when I told me. him we had Dick Fosbury. He said, "Are you are you freaking kidding me?" I, I told you, I was a big big track guy in high school. He, he is uh, he is a legend. Oh uh, you God! Know, some, someone who in- innovates a, a move that everybody has since then taken on. You know. How do you do that? You don't. Know, I mean, high call, jumping. Yeah, high jumping. High jumping. Phenomenal. He, he Phenomenal. went feet first, I think. He was the guy who went fa- feet first. No. No, he went, he went over on his back. On his back. That's right, on his back. back. On his back. Yes, back. you're right. All right. My bad. Which was crazy at that point in time, but now everybody does it. Yeah. So we're going to talk to John right now. We've got uh, our good friend Leighton Sheldon from Vintage Breaks and Just Collect coming on. Then we're going to bring Chris Roth, the winner of the... Uh, Mickey Mantle card, you guys can hear it firsthand how his life changed in a ma- matter of uh, 20 minutes. But, John. That's, that's another thing that was great. I, we, I flew home with Leighton. Leighton happens to live about two towns over from me, so uh-huh. we've known each other for a while. Um, and it was just amazing. The things that happened at the show uh, aren't, you, aren't something you can plan. Absolutely. You open up a 1955 Bowman pack, and not only do you get an Ernie Banks card, but you get a Mickey Mantle card that gets graded a PSA 9. Yeah. And we were fortunate to be on the air. I mean, we were just fortunate to, you know, Leighton and I and Lou and, and Rico had planned it about a month ago. We said, look, let's do a break the last 15 or 20 minutes of the show. And we wound up staying, Louie, about 10 minutes overtime. Yeah. Yeah, we stayed about 10 minutes on the air uh, after the show. Uh, and we just kept it going. And it was just, it was great. It was a great experience. We had a blast. John, um, your recollections of the show, I mean, the, the highlights are amazing. I, I mean, how are you feeling now that it's over? You must be, you must be exhausted, to be honest with it, you. It's a tough week, but you know what? It's a worthwhile week. Um, somebody asked me what my favorite moment of the show is, and I, I may have mentioned it to you guys when we were on the air. It's, it's when the show opens on Wednesday afternoon. You walk in, and the whole place is empty, and then the crowds just descend upon the show floor. And they're there all week. So um, while we're tired, we know we did a good job. What I'm hearing from everybody was it was undoubtedly their best national. Our attendance was up about 35 wow. percent from uh, the previous year. 35%. It was you know it was just one of those things that everything clicked, and uh, we were just happy to be able to do that. A lot of families there. Yeah, John, I mean, it was great. A lot of kids with, with their parents, uh, father or both, you know, mother. Uh, uh, that was, uh, you know, that was great. And we talked to a number of the uh, 
um, the dealers, right? Yep. And, and they all said same uh, thing. They said they did very they well were there, raving. and they were happy. So Everybody we talked great. to, and you know, Rico and I did a uh, video. We did a series of videos with uh, about a uh, ten or eleven of the sponsors, and they all said the same thing. They were knocking them dead. They were killing it. It's beautiful. It was so. Great. So that's that's exciting. good. And the other Our thing goal is to bring more kids into the hobby, and, and um, mm -hmm. we've had a no no admission policy for kids 12 and under for years. And uh, anything we can do to increase the number of people who walk into the show, it's important. The aisles need to be full for our exhibitors, right. um, and it, it's just the way to do it. So we, we're we're real pleased with the way everything went. Is it PSA that does the uh, that that the video uh, not video but the pictures with the kids with in the back? Kids, yeah, that was great. Yes. That went oh, over really man, big. that was that last went, went year was really good. Big. This was un incredible. Yeah, it really was Lines good. were all the way around. Um, you know, it was just and John. You know what the you know what, for me? You know what one of the best things was, the food. The food vendors, the food was fabulous at that at that venue. I mean, they had some really good quality food vendors. It was it was awesome. Yeah, awesome. You, did, you, you tried every one of them. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the is Rico still on his diet? That's what he I know something, yes. John. He's making me ill. He is making me ill. It, it, he you actually know, looked pretty good when we saw him. John, on, uh, you know, on he's Friday like last you, week. You ever see that one of those ads? I don't know what the product is. You got the devil on one side, and you got the and like an angel on the uh, the other side of your, your shoulders. He's the devil. He's he's teasing <laughs> me with the. We were hey. sitting. We were speaking at the uh, PSA luncheon, and they served these beautiful little uh, pastry dishes. I know. So I kept just kind of shoving one over to Rico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a great week. All right, John, let's yeah, talk about good. next year. Uh, when do you start work on next year's uh, national uh, in Chicago? Well, I'll take about a week or so off, but we'll, we'll get going. We actually, one of the other things that told me it was a great show was we actually sold out every booth on the show floor for Chicago already. Great. We we allow people to <laughs> select their booths um, in Cleveland for next year's show. And we sold out 526 booths. Well, we're getting we're getting we're getting, uh, we're getting mm -hmm. comments right now as we speak on Facebook Live, and people are just commenting. Great convention, we had a blast, great show. Uh, that's what you want to hear. So, I just want to thank you for being uh, so uh, hospitable to uh, yeah. uh, Rico and myself and Ellen and Elsie. We had a ball, and please pass on uh, our. I would thanks to Ray. Ray is just a great guy. We just had a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did a tremendous job for us, and I think that's also a reason that we were so successful. Ray knows how to get people out yeah. and to get companies to participate. So we thank you guys for being there. We appreciate that, and we'll see you guys next year in Chicago. Okay, John. John Brogy, By the, way, uh, the executative director oh, sorry, of the National. Louis, do we have it? Is it too Can early I to say something? Can yeah, I say yeah. something? Because yeah, he's going to call Leighton, so we need to do okay. the email. Okay, yeah, I'll on. do that. Leighton's sitting here. Oh, all right, good. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I have for four pass. Denny McLean. <laughs> Denny McLean was there. The last pitcher to win 31 games. It'll never happen again. I, I, I believe it'll never happen again. But anyway, he, he, oh, he hold writes. On. Me. I disagree with you. Pomerantz next year. Oh yeah, right. So, yeah. Uh, no one. No one will do it. But anyway, uh, so went over to see him, and we had a nice talk. And uh, uh, you know, he's he's been through a lot, and uh, his wife is very ill. Yeah, and, but uh, he's just that. a great guy. And uh, Hank so I was looking for him. I was looking for him in a different area where they all the guys signed. Right, right. So I'm looking, and who's who's there in front of me, signing? And it was beautiful wife, Frank Robinson. With the Orioles, remember Frank won the MVP. Me? Great player. Great player. What a line. You talk about a line. Spent some time with him? I got, got to talk with him. Hey, oh, man, alive. I told him uh, I told him the story. Uh, I don't know if he remembers, but, you know, he got knocked down in Boston. I remember by that. Bob remember yeah. And the next pitch he hit about nine miles. Yeah. And you don't, you just don't knock a guy like that down. But anyways, that was so that was, was a thrill just, for had, me. You brought me back to the '99 All Star Game. I'm on the field for the yeah. Home Run Derby yeah. beforehand, and everyone's milling around for the press availability before. And there are two black Boston auxiliary cops, both in their early 20s, mm. and they're standing there getting balls autographed by Frank Robinson and Buck O'Neill. No, oh Buck O'Neill, yeah. yeah. Oh, and they wow. had no idea who was signing for him. <laughs> I had to explain to both Isn't of them who great? these people were. But that was great. Yeah. Yeah, Frank was great. Hey, Mike Concho just said, how about that mantle pull? Mike, stick around because we're going to bring in the kid that won it. But let's bring in 
Our good friend who was, uh, you know, actually made this all happen, Leighton Sheldon from uh, VintageBreaks.com and Just Collect. Leighton, how are you, my hey, man? Hey, Leighton. Oh, I'm doing great. How are you, gentlemen? Good. Uh, thank, hey, thanks for blowing my eardrums out, but yeah. that's all right. <laughs> Hey, well, listen, get in line. I think I got about a dozen <laughs> lawsuits sitting in the, in it was the mailbox great. No, here. It was great. Store. It was great. Hey, I got to tell you, I got to tell Lou and Leighton something uh, in, in, uh, with my pal Rico here. Louis, um, you know, Rico signed for the VIP, uh, for the VIP people uh, on Friday morning from 9.30 to 11, Rico? Yeah, we stayed a little longer, but uh, it was for, nice. For an hour and a half, nice. yeah. this is the God's honest truth, for an hour and a half, they were standing 100 deep to get his autograph uh, yeah, for a had, solid hour and a half. Well, they thought I was Rico Cardi. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was great. If you were, the food would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But let's bring in Leighton. Leighton. Uh, your thoughts. Congratulations. Just, I mean, first of all, that really, was, that was con- incredible. It was unbelievable. We're going to bring Chris in. Are we going to be able to have Chris and Leighton on at the same time? Yes. Wow, technology, Louis, huh? Yeah, you didn't bring it up till 16 minutes into the show. Of course not. Of yeah. course not. But, uh, Leighton, <laughs> let's talk about your feelings first. About Let's talk about the national first. How did you do? Uh, and then we'll talk about the whole Chris Roth thing. Sure. So, uh, to start off with, I'm speechless. I mean, what happened, uh, you know, people are talking like, you know, Leighton, I haven't been to church or temple in years, but I'm going now because you somehow parted the Red Seas. And I'm thinking, like, the only one who I know did that was Moses, or at least reported to. So the point is, is that it was unbelievable. Uh, You know, people have asked me, like, did you dream about pulling a mantle? And I said, the truth be told is I, I, for some reason or another, I thought we were going to pull an Aaron. Yeah. And I would have been happy with that. And if it would have got, you know, an eight or an eight and a half, I would have been happy with that, too. When Mike alerted everyone in the the crowd to get their cameras ready, this is how crazy it was. I still didn't know we had a mantle. I really thought, you know what, maybe it's an Ernie Banks again, but it's dead centered. Maybe it's a Hank Aaron or or Al Kaline second year. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a Willie Mays. Like, there's so many great cards, the Elston Howard rookie, that it could have been to be the single best card with... The last spot, because we already knew that the 20th card was Johnny Padres. It was on the bottom. You could right, see it right. at the bottom of the cellophane pack. Hmm. I mean, this is the stuff that baseball well, you, card dreams are made. You of. know what happened? Like again, you were standing in the back, and when Mike looked at that card, I, I you know, we were sitting right next to him, and his hands went back. He pulled his yeah, hands back right, towards right. his body, like. Oh my God! Exactly. I don't want to touch this. Exactly. He said, "Oh, uh, right? I remember him saying, oh my God, what was that?'" And, and then, <laughs> and then, uh, and by the way, someone just con- uh, commented, "Move over, Michael Buffer." Layton's call on the mantle pull was epic. All right. <laughs> well, that's good company. I'll certainly take that as a compliment. I appreciate that. But and then when uh, uh, Mike handed that card to, to Rico and then to me, and it wasn't even in a, fo- in, a in a sleeve. I held it for maybe three seconds, and I, I gave it back to him. He says, not touching it. Not touching it. You know, Leighton, the whole thing, I know, uh, of course, the mantle card was the most exciting, but actually the whole thing was exciting. Oh, it was great. You know, every card, it's like, uh, you know, uh, you really built up, you know, the was, suspense awesome. on that. And uh, I really I, I really enjoyed it. it and did great. you notice, Leighton? Thank God it was card 19. If it had been card number one. Oh, oh God. God. You're yeah, right. It would have been right. much different. You're, 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 that's, that's a good point. I would have lost the whole thing. Did you I would have destroyed 18 cards. I would have been, yeah, I would have, like, thrown them in the air or something. But you know what was interesting? Did you notice how, as as your segment with us, and you were on with us for about 20 minutes, as your segment um, uh, uh, went on, the crowd kept getting bigger yeah. yep. and bigger and bigger. It was... Uh, it was really, really yeah, interesting. Say, that's an exciting uh, little thing you do, <laughs> Look, man. Listen to this one. Uh, one of our viewers, Eric, <laughs> he's saying, Al Michaels, Joe Buck, Leighton Sheldon. All right, hey. It <laughs> really has a good ring to it, gentlemen, right? <laughs> yeah, there we go. No, everyone's better than Joe Buck, and <laughs> Leighton doesn't bet like Al Michaels, so he's got a way to go. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're going to do. Let's take a break. We're going to take a break a little early. And then we're going to bring, hopefully, we can get in touch with him, Chris Roth, the winner of the Mantle Card. And we're going to bring it all together for you guys, our viewers and listeners. And we're going to get it firsthand how this young man's life changed in about 10 seconds. I know. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Beautiful. 
Since 1996, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full-service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high, Mile High. Go to milehighcardco.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auction and Collectibles Company. If you're looking to maximize your return on your sports cards and collectibles, look no further. We at Memory Lane Auction House offer you several options to achieve top dollar for your collectibles. Whether you're looking to auction or sell privately, we're the number one choice with over 17 years in the hobby. Nobody will work harder to achieve your goals. Just call us today at 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE. Or visit us on the web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Go with the best. Go with Memory Lane. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a zero dollar deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports, specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game used bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. All right, uh, before we bring Chris in and we bring Leighton back, I know, is Chris on the phone with us? Yes. Okay, before we bring Chris and Leighton in, we have to do a little How business. Many times do we have to go over this? <laughs> Wicca, what about our friends at eBay? Well, first of all, they were at the show. We got to meet uh, everybody. Oh, we had a great time with and eBay. And they are really. All right, just read. Will you all please? right, for Pete's sake. Go ahead. Listen, uh, folks, if you're looking for autographed memorabilia, <laughs> well, what would you be doing watching the show, right? <laughs> uh, hard to find collectibles from your favorite team that officially licensed MLB jersey or that rear view mirror to watch the Yankees and jump on eBay after the show. Why'd you include that? You know, don't, I hate don't do Yankees. that. He thinks no. it's funny. I, I hate the Yankees. No, okay. You can find just about anything on eBay. How about a 1948? This is this is great. How about a 1948 Satchel Page rookie PSA 3.5 Bowman card for 19,200? Can you lend me 19 grand? <laughs> yeah. Uh, or an early 1900 Spalding Johnny Evers. Uh, Evers. Evers. That's why I spelled it like that. Store bought bat for five hundred and ten dollars. How many e's you put in there? Evers. Go ahead. Uh, here's one a T206 Ty Cobb red background tobacco card, graded uh, PSA 3.5 for twenty two hundred dollars. All right, here's one that's, that's everyone good. should look at. And this yeah. is legit. A Rico Petroselli game used bat signed by Rico. Oh. Yes. Tony Canigliaro, Reggie Smith, George Scott, Mike Andrews, Spocky Lyle, Dick Williams, Jose Santiago, Ken Brett, and as an added bonus, Reggie Jackson, Catfish Hunter, and Vita Blue. Swear Is to God. Is that real? Is that real? 7900 7, bucks. You know, I thought you were putting a song. 7900 bucks. But why are you telling me I don't get any of that money? I know that. You're out. Right. But, and also, if you're on a budget, if you're cheap, if you live in a cave, or if you're almost broke, you can pick up a Sibby Sisti 1951 Bowman reprint card, number 170, for 39 cents. You're kidding. I really? swear to God. I'd do it. 
Uh, they have zillions. That's eBay, of course. Has zillions of cards for less than twenty dollars. T two o six cards also for uh, uh, under twenty dollars as well. Will you just read the copy? <laughs> a little distressed for great for novice or intermediate buyers, or the guy that's on a budget. And don't worry about the mustache. And you know they put it on with the pen, pen and all that, and the the horns. So listen, eBay has one hundred sixty two million users and two hundred fifty thousand people per day go to the site. Remember, if you want the very best in sports collecting, you can find it on eBay. All right, That's let's it. get to our two guests. <coughs> Actually, oh. the hell with Leighton. Let's get to our real guest. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so in a matter of 15 minutes, this just young man's life changed, I would think. Would you agree with that, Rico? I would think, well, uh, to some extent, yes. All right, on the phone with us right now is a lucky winner. Of the 1955 Mickey Mantle card, Chris Roth. Chris, how are you? Hello, Chris. Hello, gentlemen. I'm doing well. How are you? Good. So, uh, congratulations. You know, we were there. Thank you so much. Well, we were there uh, when it transpired, but we were not on your side of the fence when it transpired. Why don't you walk us through uh, the events uh, that happened uh, when you got the call? Can you can you kind of walk us through that? I, it really it, it adds to the the complete unbelievable nature of what transpired on Friday. So I did get the email that the pack was breaking, and it was to be broken at 3:30 live on the stage. I had such a busy work week that I wasn't able to actually view the video until 5:30. So much to my surprise, when I logged in. The vintagebreaks.com to see the replay of the video, I accidentally clicked the recap video. So I got to the extent to where I saw there was an Ernie Banks poll, had no idea, no knowledge as to where my number fell in the break. I was like, holy cow, an Ernie Banks 55 Bowman, that'd be phenomenal though. So then I, I, I stopped there and went back to watch it live where all of you gentlemen were on stage. Uh, and got to witness it firsthand, and I get through it, and it was very, very arduous having to wait until that 19th spot. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can imagine, as you as you as you know, because you witnessed it, the collation started to come back to where there's a good chance that there's another Ernie Banks in this. After I saw the first one, did not go to me. And, and sure enough, the look on Mike, who was sitting at the table, <laughs> when I saw his face, you know, he, he has, a, he has a, a, a terrible, terrible poker face, as Layton <laughs> can attest, from, from other breaks and other cards that he has pulled, that I'm like, you know what, I'm in for a really nice surprise. Then when he asks everyone in attendance to pull out their phones because they're about to witness history, it was at that moment, I'm thinking that this might be slightly better than an Ernie Banks duplicate <laughs> out of the same pack. And, and sure enough, I mean, it, it still has not settled in that it was a 55 mantle in that pack. Not only in that pack, but the last card that was unknown because it was it was right right above Johnny Padres in, in the pack. I, I, it, it's unreal. The complexion, I'm, I'm watching you guys right now, the complexion on your face yeah. is is a hundred times the contrast of the complexion of my face when I finally saw that it was Mickey Mantle. <sighs> my face, my, my face went out. Uh, it, it, it was it was somewhere between olive drab. Oh, there it is. Thanks, thanks, Layton. Thanks for thanks for replicating the expression on my face last <laughs> Friday. That uh, it, it, I went weak in the knees. There are no words that could describe the feelings and emotions that were going through me when I actually laid eyes on that card. I got to tell you something. Uh, two things that that will forever be embedded in my mind. There's a there's a picture. I think someone from PSA PSA posted it late. And there's a picture of you with your eyes bulging out of your head, <laughs> <laughs> and and it's just it's just a classic. We're gonna yeah. have that picture blown up and framed. That's number yeah, one. You should, yeah. And That's then the look on my part. And I've then got the, the look. Actually blown up now. <laughs> <laughs> and then the look on my partner's face, because even I mean nothing. Uh, this guy here doesn't get rattled much. He's been in many, many big, big, important baseball games. And the look on your face, the look, oh. the look on Rico's face, well, was absolutely. Mike. 
I'm Unbelievable. right next to Mike. I'm right next to Mike, and he he turns that card over and looks at you know the next card, and he goes, "Oh my God, I can see it. it's a mantle." And then when everybody went nuts, you know, uh, oh wow, it was just it was a, so it was so incredible. exciting. So Chris, let's uh, let's let's let's. Well, I was going to ask Chris, oh, what yeah. is it? What is it, Chris? What do you uh, do? You think about what you're going to do yeah, with it? What are your plans? You know, it's it's so fresh right now mm. that. Currently, I know it's in the best hands humanly possible with Thanks, vintage breaks and Right. Uh, you. you know, I think, you know, the media inquiries continue to come in <clears throat> and, and, you know, I'm happy to field them as is Leighton. And I want everyone to be able to see this, this card and be able to have an opportunity to enjoy it as much as I. And as far as a sale, a trade, that that's all to come. Mm -hmm. uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want to, Drive up there, grab the card, lock it in a safe for it to never see the light of day again. Yeah. Well, I think that's I think that's wise. Uh, Leighton, again, I may be stepping out of bounds here, but a card like this, because of the notoriety behind the card, I know I know a PSA fifty five mantle is worth a lot of money. But does does the venue and the event add to the value of that card? One hundred percent, one hundred, yeah, absolutely. And I know for a fact that, uh, and Chris and I will talk off air, that there are some folks that don't want to participate in a bidding war. They want to be given a price. And you know, even though Chris and I hadn't spoken, I had a good feeling. Uh, I knew where Chris stood. That you know, in due time, meaning for right now, it's all very fresh. And, you know, candidly, I'm glad that Chris feels the way he does. I'd like as many people to see it as possible and realize, like, it was a magical moment. And I think what's so great is there's literally in this country hundreds of millions of people. And of those, there's millions of us that at one point or another have opened up a pack of baseball cards. So even though that we opened up a really special one just a few days ago, we've all opened up a pack of cards. And you can imagine your elation or your reaction upon discovering something like that, well, certainly I didn't hide it too well. I didn't have a poker face. Um, you think? It was unbelievable. Chris, I want to ask you if, uh, do you, are you a you know, collector? I mean, how extensive is your collection? Do you have anything, clo anything close to that, to the mantle? Well, I have absolutely nothing near what mm. was unearthed on Friday. Yeah. But I have been a collector even since my youth. And uh, I guess throughout the better part of the last 10 years, I've been working to piece together a Mickey Mantle collection. Mickey has always been near and dear to my heart. It was my mm. father's favorite baseball player. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's saying a lot, especially Enrico, I think you can attest. You know, I, I bleed orange. I, I'm, a, I'm an Orioles fan through mm -hmm. and through, but there's something about Mickey Mantle that it doesn't matter which team your allegiance lies, yep. he he was he was legendary. Yeah. So I've had I've mantled and uh, mm. you know you name it, it's a hodgepodge. Chris, are you a regular purchaser of breaks, or did was this just a freak thing because you thought a mantle might be in there, or you know how often do you buy into breaks? Uh, I think. Uh, Layton can attest. It's been there since day one. It's something about the vintage Pretty cards much. that that really, uh, really speaks to me. It, it's it's a matter of this particular card is an uncirculated specimen. Hmm. But even those that that have come through vintage breaks, either be it a pack or some of the other great things that they do, the story behind the card and to be able to put myself into the shoes of someone back in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, to try and, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a weird connection between, between what has existed for far longer than I. Mm. You know, Chris, mm -hmm. um, as, as you're speaking, uh, I'm thinking about, you know, my youth and what Mickey Mantle meant to all of us. I mean, Rico, you know, Rico Petroselli, Red Sox Hall of Famer, I've asked Rico a thousand times, who was your, who was your favorite player? And what have you always said, Rico, growing up as a kid? Uh, Joe uh, Sparkinson. He was uh, a good second baseman. Well, I mean, you of course, were, Mickey, you, Mickey, you, you love Mickey. Mickey. Yeah. Everybody. Um, it, 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 you know, why don't you just tell tell Chris and, and our listeners this story? Uh, you told it uh, on the air uh, the first time you played, 
and you met Mickey Mantle. Went, tell wow. that story. That's a great story. Yeah, Chris, I, 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 my rookie year, and uh, way back when I was, just, what, 20, 21 years old, and uh, we played the Yankees. I got a hit or I walked, and Mantle's playing first base, so he's my idol as a kid. I can't, couldn't believe I'm next to Mickey Mantle. So I take a lead, you know, the next hitter gets up, and it's ball one. Boom, I come back to the base. Should I talk to, should I say something to Mickey? You know, what if he gets mad at me? I mean, geez. All right, ball, uh, take a lead. Ball two, come back. And I say, I, what do I do now? If I may never get this chance again. So I'm like nervous as anything. All of a sudden, he turns around and says, hey, Rico, how you doing? <laughs> and I said, ah, not too bad, Nick. How are you? <laughs> so I was just, my knees were knocking. All right, listen, before we continue on, uh, Chris, can you stay with us uh, a little while? I sure can. All right, listen, we finally, I repeat, we finally have a winner after three and a half weeks. Kelly Malone guessed the right Hall of Famer that one Rico Petroselli played with, Uh, Gaylord Perry. Congratulations. I'm against Congratulations, Kelly. You win, yeah, you nice win the long ball, the summer of 75, signed That's by Rico. Nice. Nice Kelly, book. if you get a chance, just Ooh, message me with your address, and we'll get the book right I'll out to you. Kelly congratulations. To Kelly. Yeah, Rico will sign it, uh, personalize it to you. To Kelly, congratulations, you win the book. Nice going. All right, let's continue on uh, with Chris. So, Chris, uh, how many uh, uh, outlets have contacted you? Oh, my Lord, I've lost count at this point. Uh there have been a lot of major news, print and uh, and and you know color and motion that have contacted both myself and Leighton. We've we've been playing the the good friendly game of sharing all this stuff so everybody knows the phone calls that are coming in. Uh, so you know between ESPN, USA Today, the Washington Post, uh, oh. the Baltimore Sun, <laughs> uh, the list goes on and on. And I think once this settles in from the original press release and shock and all of what actually transpired on Friday, uh, once we get down into the, the, the meat and potatoes of how truly improbable what surfaced on Friday sinks in, I, I, I think that the story just grows from here. Well, we want to we want to congratulate you. We're, we're, we're so happy. And I think the thing that I really like about it is that you are you, you're passionate about collecting. That's what it's all about. It wasn't just a random in and out thing. Uh, you know what you're talking about. Everybody uh, in the collective. This is what people in, in the hobby like to see. You know, they're, they're, everybody's happy for you. Uh, just from from talking to so many people over the last three, four, five days. People are just thrilled that you won, and uh, we, we're really happy for you. When are you guys going to hook up, uh, Leighton? It's at the National, too. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that we're going to be uh, meeting very soon. Chris actually left me a message when I was doing the Vintage Breaks PSA show, and I didn't have time to call him before uh, your show. So hopefully we'll be speaking sometime this evening, and I would imagine in the next week or so we'll be getting together. Fantastic. Fantastic. Hey, Chris, <clears throat> we're going to be at the uh, at the Boston show uh, you, you have an open invitation to come on over, uh, spend some time with us, uh, bring the card if you still have it, and uh, you know maybe we can get the general public uh, public to shake your hand and take a look at it. I, I do appreciate that offer. I always look for an excuse to get up to Boston. Good, Chris. Uh, you know I'm on. Uh... <laughs> You're on so, be, besides wait, your social security. Social security. Here, here, we, go. here, we, go. here so, we go. Listen, I'll give you 500 for it. <laughs> hey, you got to give I me a break. I was going to hire you as my personal security. There you go. There you go. All right, Chris, listen, uh, it, was a, it was great talking to you, and congratulations yeah. from all of us. And actually, congratulations yes. from the whole collectibles world. Yeah. Congrats, Chris. That's great. Very excited. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Take care. Appreciate your time. Take Chris care. Roth, well. the winner of the 1955 nice. Mantle Bowman card. Not that. Uh, uh, Leighton, that's something I won't live. Uh, uh, Leighton, you want my prediction? What? Absolutely. Seventy grand. That sounds. That sounds in the neighborhood. Yeah. Now, now, you know. Now we have someone real. Uh, Tom, should I speak to Ellen about that? Uh, you can. That'd be nice. Uh, except right. uh, if 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 it happens, uh, Rico owes me about seventy one grand. So uh, we'll just call it even, Rick, right? Well, I want to know what Leighton, after this, exciting, yeah, exciting. Yeah, and, and, yeah, not only what do you do, do next, but um, what's the? I wanted to ask, you know, 
oh, it's basically that, you know. What do you do? You go on. Uh, how long? You th- uh, this this should be, uh, you know, uh, the last a long time as oh, far yeah, as I this, would think. Uh, I would think this is a uh, this is something this that's going to carry for for several months. I think uh, auction report is saying eighty six thousand for that card, Leighton. Right, listen, I'll take a ten percent higher. Let's do ninety five thousand. <laughs> All right, listen, let's do this. We're gonna, you're going to hang with us for the rest of the show, correct? Absolutely. All right, we're going to take. Uh, quick, wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we want to talk about the national and what's in the future for Just Collect and Vintage Breaks. Hang in there. Rico has to go to the bathroom again. We'll be right Number back. Number one thousand seven hundred. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auction and Collectibles Company. If you're looking to maximize your return on your sports cards and collectibles, look no further. We at Memory Lane Auction House offer you several options to achieve top dollar for your collectibles. Whether you're looking to auction or sell privately, we're the number one choice with over 17 years in the hobby. Nobody will work harder to achieve your goals. Just call us today at 877-606-606. 5263. That's 877 606 LANE. Or visit us on the web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Go with the best. Go with Memory Lane. If you're a collector and want the best return when you sell your cards, look no further than Small Traditions. As a matter of fact, select up to 100 of your best raw cards for submission to PSA, and they will pay you for all the expensive shipping, insurance, and even the grading fees all up front. Their expert staff will screen and prepare your cards for grading and will auction your graded cards at a 0% seller's rate, subtracting only your grading fees after your successful sales. Grading may be foreign or intimidating for some, but at Small Traditions, they do the legwork. Contact the good folks at smalltraditions.com or call them at... 303-832-1975. If you're looking to maximize the value of your collection, remember, small traditions equals big results. For more than 30 years, Robert Edward Auctions has been the industry leader when it comes to helping you realize the most money for your baseball cards and sports memorabilia. In addition to their unparalleled reputation for honesty and integrity, they reach the largest number of bidders in the business and offer lower seller's fees, as well as generous cash advances up front on your valuable material. Contact them today at 908-226-9900. That's 908-226-9900 or at robertedwardauction.com. Louis, uh, I think I was sleeping at the wheel now. Which one? I didn't know we were back. Well, well yeah, like I said, happened. which one? Rico and I were uh, just uh, shooting the breeze. All somebody, right, Rico, somebody won the the the, uh, the the book. Got Gaylord Perry. You know how I many? Uh, do you know how many hints uh, I gave you all out there? That was, that was worth said, four weeks. I yeah, I said Lord, Rico, uh, K- Lord, K- K- Lord, Lord Perry, Gay Lord Perry. You play, I mean, he, how many times I did he pitch it. against you? Oh, a number of times when he was. He never juiced the ball. He never. He never cheated. No, he never did. Never, no, never no. touched the ball. No, no, no. no never had no. any Vaseline in his jock, his no, pants, no his head. Nope. Uh, Pine tar. Uh, yeah. Spit. No, Mr. No, Anti Cheater over here, but David if Ortiz it, gets a pass. If, what did he use? if anything, what did he use? If anything, yeah, grease, some grease or something, uh, uh, something that didn't it wasn't wet on the ball, you know. So was he the guy who pulled the file out of his back pocket when yeah, he no, had that no, one no. shaking that, him down at the mound? That, that was uh, oh, Tim Perry. No, uh, Fred Perry, the knuckleballer's no one brother, Ryan. Huff's brother. No, oh, what's the other guy? Charlie Huff. Charlie Huff. Charlie Huff. No, it was no. Uh, Sam Huff. No, 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 it was somebody else. Okay. I'll get it. All right, anyways, how about our friends at PWCC yeah. Marketplace? Well, since 2008, uh, PWCC has tracked the data and proven that investment caliber market offers more than mere collecting over 10 years. If you click on uh, PWCCMarketplace.com, you'll have all of the information needed to make wise decisions. PWCC's comprehensive tracking and sales metrics Demonstrate that trading cards have outperformed, listen to this, outperformed the S&P 500 by more than 200%. Necro. Necro, yes, that's it. With a return on investment of 153%. Man, PWCC believes that trust is the bedrock of the trading card marketplace. 
and they'll handle every trade with the highest level of integrity and care. Create an account to join their mailing list and gain full access to PWCC suite of investor tools, including the PWCC indies. <laughs> indices. 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 Yeah. Indies. What the hell are you thinking indies? An, an auction history sales database. It's all about analytics uh, that you'll have at your fingertips. I mean, uh, you, yeah, right. Well, I was going to say, even if you don't know anything about it. You know you're P wandering aimlessly, right? PWCCMarketplace.com. Whether you're buying or selling, you now have all the tools that you'll need to make that educated decision. That's the PWCCMarketplace.com for any analytics investors can depend on. And we saw we had great discussions uh, with them at, uh, at the show, and I'll tell you, they got some great plans, boy. Late this next time, late. next time you co-host with us, I'm emailing you all the live reads. He's out, you're in. Yeah, you can, uh, <laughs> it's too long. He gives me the long ones. He yeah, takes no, the that's show. That's because you can't read. Uh, well, listen, hey, I lost my glasses. And <laughs> They're also that's written fine. in type size for an 86 year old. <laughs> Like six <laughs> pages of copy there. All yeah. right, let's get back to Leighton. All right, Leighton, uh, how was the uh, success? Uh, you know, let's take this little event and put it aside for a minute. How did uh, how did you do at the at the national? Well, JustCollect.com and VintageBreaks.com did great. Uh, obviously, VintageBreaks.com, everyone knows the highlight there. For Just Collect, you know, we met a lot of folks. Scott, our vice president, ran our booth. Um, we bought some fresh stuff, including a collection on Wednesday evening uh, at, in the lobby of our hotel comes from a gentleman who was 79 years old who recruited his grandson to help him uh, both evaluate and sell the collection. These folks found us on the internet and it included a bunch of cards that have never seen the light of day, never been graded, really never handled. The cards are very nice. And the time periods from 1948 to about 1955, including mm. probably about a few dozen 1948 Leaf baseball cards and about half of those were short prints, including a Hal Newhauser, wow. which is very, very hard to find in high grade. We actually put them out um, at our booth with a sign, some of the cards, just indicating we had made this purchase, we were excited. Um, you know, generally we're gonna be blogging about it uh, before we sell the cards, that's how Just Collect operates. We do that at justcollect.com slash blog. And we had a dealer who was very adamant about wanting to buy those cards right then and there. And I said, don't you see the sign? I don't think they really cared about the sign. So that's just to give you an insight as to the national that people get very excited about good material. It had been maybe four or five minutes and I already had um, folks not just congratulating me on my phone, but asking me, is the card for sale? Do you know who it is? And so um, it was just a, a fun-filled, action-packed uh, week. And then yesterday was our first time that we were live with Vintage Break since after the national. You could find us Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, starting at 6 p.m. on Tuesday and Thursday, 4 p.m. on Fridays. We, uh, you can find us on youtube.com slash vintage breaks. <laughs> and last night for hours, we had well over 100 people just watching us live on YouTube. And, you know, we haven't approached those kinds of numbers before. You know, sometimes it's 40, sometimes sure, it's 50. Sure. And, uh, you know, you're talking about an easy double almost two and a half times the regular size audience to give you some, you know, to give some of the folks perspective about how busy we were. We had 40 different breaks sold out, not counting before we went live, meaning we were breaking for hours in a row. Mike was a machine. We, I mean, we opened everything from stuff from the 60s, like a 60 at cello pack, all the way up to the 2000s. I'm looking on the desk here to give you some perspective, guys. These are all sold out at vintagebreaks.com. We're opening up a 93 SP next time we go live. 89 score football. So when they're in these bags, it means that that pack has sold out and the holders are behind it. 81 basketball, 79 baseball, 81 football, another 93 SP, 80 tops hockey, 81 Opeachy hockey, wow. 77 football. There's a box of 2005 SP authentic hockey, possible Sidney Crosby rookie. Oh, by the way, my son's name is Crosby. Has nothing to do with Sidney Crosby. 2007 artifacts, Bing possible Kevin Durant signed rookie card. And then we have all these great packs that we picked up at the National that are going to be listed, some of them tomorrow night, some of them in the future for vintagebreaks.com. I mean, if I can't show you how much fun that we had, I'm trying to do the best I can with all this great stuff happening. It was amazing. It was an unbelievable time. Now, also, uh, why not mention your Wednesday night show on the PSA Facebook Live page? Oh, you stole my thunder. <laughs> so, for those of you watching Stop Tom stealing. and Rico's show right now, which I'm happy to be a guest on, 
We have recently started a Vintage Breaks PSA show, which is every Wednesday at 4.30 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can either watch us live on PSA's Facebook page, or you can do so on youtube.com slash vintage breaks. And we had a lot of folks watching our show today. And I'm not sure if you gentlemen heard, but we made a $500 donation, Vintage Breaks did, to the Ronald McDonald House. Excellent. And Very nice. we were hoping that, you know, listen, you guys will discuss this over dinner. But we're hoping that you and Rico can match us. And if we can do that, that means that we reached a thousand dollars donation to the Ronald McDonald House uh, between both of our shows. And that's something no, that we, we should have, both be we very have no, proud of. no problem doing that. Uh, very excited we, about we, that. we had donated some uh, some material uh, to the that's Ronald wonderful. McDonald uh, when, uh, in in uh, uh, in Cleveland. Ronald McDonald uh, House to me personally right. means a lot. Yeah. We've talked about it. No, it does, Tom. Yeah. Hey, listen. One other thing uh, for our listeners up here in WCAP, I do believe that uh, uh, you're going to be able to listen to uh, Vintage Breaks show with Layton on WCAP. Correct? Is that? Yes, we're very excited about that. I have to talk to Sam and touch base and follow up. Yeah. But I believe that's very close to happening. We're very excited about that. And by the way, for our, our listeners, a couple of people have emailed, and we've said this a thousand times. When we're on WCAP up here in the Boston, New Hampshire area, they tape our show uh, because we are not, we're not on at 6 o'clock from 6 to 7. We air at 9 o'clock after the, uh, uh, the single-A Lowell Spinners, Red Sox Spinners game. Uh, then they air yeah. us. So Layton is going to be aired before the Spinners games. Then they'll have the Spinners games, and then the Great American Collectibles show will be airing after the game. So it's kind of a nice baseball night. Nice, yeah. It's right. been a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. All so right, so Leighton, uh, with that being said, uh, your Yankees now are nine games behind. Uh, you had to bring it up. You know what, guys? This is when i got to leave. And fading <laughs> fading rapidly. What, do, what are your rapidly. thoughts? Yeah, listen, you know what? They need a miracle like a 55 Bowman mantle. They need something <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, I think I think, I, I think at this point uh, they should be thinking of that wild card. Uh, nothing's impossible, but it no. it just doesn't look like the Red Sox are gonna, uh, you know, uh, have a long losing streak. But uh, it's still gonna be the postseason's gonna be interesting. And if the Yankees, well, well they should make it. Let's say the Yankees, Red Sox, you know, Houston. Cleveland, uh, it'll be another American exciting. League's got some powerhouses. Yeah, yeah, they got some good teams. By the way, uh, Spotty Hawk is asking where Lou was at the National. Uh, Marlon, just, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but on weekends, Lou is on a uh, work release program. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, The rules of the settlement say uh, I can't travel to Cleveland. Right. On Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, oh, Lou is, goodness, uh, he's, Lou. In, he's, he's getting in, beat up, bud. He's in yeah. confinement. And they, what do they let you on, Sunday nights? Uh, yeah. Sunday <laughs> I've nights. I've got an ankle bracelet on as they speak. <laughs> wow. They let him out on Sunday nights, so, uh, so that's yeah. Say he's going to turn your microphone off. You'll be talking. By the way, I, can we? PSA was oh, unbelievable. They did a great job. Really uh, Leighton, uh, I mean, Joe and uh, the whole crew, I went in the back there. They are going 100 miles an hour the whole show, the whole day, all, you know. Day and night, just, really. Uh, we worked incredible. breaking uh, live from the show till midnight, three different nights That's Tuesday, crazy. Wednesday, and Thursday. And the only other folks that were in the, uh, at the convention, other than the breakers in the Case Break Pavilion, which is run by my good buddy David and Ripping Wax, uh, was the folks at PSA. So well, they, they really you, must have had, like, you know, 18-hour shifts It was incredible. Because, I mean, Rico and I yeah. and Ellen, uh, we were there signing books all weekend, and the line just never stopped. And those people just worked their butts oh, off. Geez, and yeah, by the wow. way, speaking of which, I'm going to give us a plug. Right. If you want a copy of our new book that was released at the National and All Stars Cardboard Memories, uh, you can go, go right to Amazon, pick it up on Amazon. Uh, I'm very proud of this book. Ellen's very proud of this book, and it's all because of my partner no, here. No, no, you guys did all be job. quiet. Oh, shut up. This is it's just a great. It's a baseball card, baseball history book. It's uh, Rico's recollection, recollections, uh, and little behind the scenes stories of uh, him playing with and against 56 of the greatest Hall of Famers of all time. And as I said at the PSA luncheon, Leighton, I don't know if you were there, but I wasn't able to make it. You know, we did a series of interviews. And the best stories are right in my iPhone, right here. What best stories? The best stories, behind the scenes stories. Hey, hey, and hey. I can't, I cannot divulge until after wow. Rico croaks. But the day after he croaks, there's another. You keep book talking, I out. might croak right now. <laughs> if you keep eating gum from 1978, you <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> oh God, don't remind me of that. All right, listen, uh, we have a few minutes left. I got to talk about our good friend Jared at Pristine Auctions. 
When it comes to meeting a budget, Pristine Auction has something for everyone. Jared and the great staff of Pristine offer several auction formats all the way down to a daily auction. Each auction ends nightly with hundreds of lots. By the way, all daily auctions are offered with no reserve prices. Whether it's cards, signed jerseys, sports and non-sports memorabilia, Pristine Auction has it all, Rico. That's Pristine Auction. P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E. Simply go to pristineauction.com and begin bidding. You know, Leighton, i got to tell you, one observation is that it seems to me is that those PSA dealers, the guys that do business on a regular basis with PSA and the general public, you guys all seem to be friendly competitors. Uh, Am I right in saying that? Oh, very much so. You know, across the board, really, from the big boys like Heritage and REA, you know, to the individual dealers like my friend Joe E. and his two sons who are out there, um, I can honestly say that I certainly look forward to the national in terms of the dollars and cents of it. Oh, but oh, my goodness. I saw Tom, uh, you know, I don't want to use his last name, but Tom C. from Leland's, who was actually overseas for 13 years. And I ran into the aisle, and people thought I saw a ghost. I mean, you know, the amount of people, friends, family that you run into, uh, obviously you make new moments and new memories like we did with the 55 Bowman Mantle. Uh, There was a family that was sponsored by the Ronald McDonald House that got to experience the national completely expense-free with a shopping spree. That was the first time that had ever happened. Yeah, we spoke to them. We met them. There was just so much great stuff that happened there. I mean, people are asking how everyone's going to top it, but yet somehow John... Uh, Brogy and the rest of his crew do, and we're forever grateful for that. Yeah, it's just it was just a, it's such a well-run event, huh, Rico? Absolutely. I mean, uh, this, uh, I mean, the place we were in was it IX? Uh, IX Center. Yeah, gigantic. Beautiful. It was gigantic, like and huge. it was spotless. That's true. You know, I, I Chicago. I thought, what well, you know, can't be better than Chicago because my first one. And when I walked in there, I said. No, it was great. Wow. It was great. And Orlando on Friday night sprung for a, a nice dinner for with the uh, with for uh, Rico and I, Ellen and Elsie. He actually oh, very sp- nice. he actually spent money. Oh God, you no, Joe, he was great. Joe, Joe was great. Don't listen to Joe him. is great. I know. And by the way, we're going to start bringing in. Uh, we we kind of twisted his arm a little bit, and Steve Sloan, the new, the new president of PSA, is going to be joining us uh, starting next week. We're going to do a five great. minute segment. Uh, every week with Steve, so he can kind of keep us abreast of what's going on in the industry and all that good stuff. Leighton, I just want to thank you, man. Uh, you really made our weekend. It all worked out great. You know, uh, you and I had talked about doing that last 15 minutes. We were going to do a break. None of us knew what was going to transpire, but, no, boy, we no had a know. blast. We had a blast. Yeah. Hey, I'll never forget it, uh, and I hope to be able to share it with my son soon enough so he'll understand. Now, listen, when you get up here in November, you're coming up for the Boston show, right? Oh, I expect a uh, you know a full uh, rollout of the red carpet. I'm hoping a personal invitation to well, Rico's Rico, favorite no, spot. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, pull in a day early, and Rico's already promised me that he's taking you and I out for dinner. I'm looking forward to it. I will have no money on me, Rico. That, so you don't you have to. Hey, as a matter of fact, if you really pull some sp- strings, if Rico was a real good friend, we'd have dinner right at Fenway Park. It's off season. Joanne, my niece <laughs> in California, help me out with these guys, will you? Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> All right, Leighton. It was great talking to you, and congratulations. You, you did a Thanks hell of so a much job. For everything. Take, Take care, care Leighton. Leighton Sheldon great. of Just Collect and Vintage. He's Breaks. got tremendous oh, energy. Man, That's one job. of the he's one a, of a big asset to uh, he is. He is tremendous energy, and he's excited. Excitable and exciting, so that's great. It's uh, it's all good. It's not that good. <laughs> no, I thought we were off the air. <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying great. you I'm you kidding. you were silent for a minute. No, no, we had fun. I had no, a blast. It was great. You know something? It was great Tell working with you. Yeah, yeah. We had a few laughs. Oh, a lot of laughs. We had a, a lot laughs. of laughs. Rico and I, Louis, uh, every oh, night yeah. uh, we would uh, go out to the hotel. They had a little corner of the hotel and smoke a cigar. And one guy was there, and off the books, the people walking by. No, Yankee none. Fan. We were just smoking, smoking cigars, shooting the breeze. Yeah. And the guy kind of put two and two together with Rico. He says, "Are you Rico Petrucelli?" Rico says, "You know, Rico, yeah, yep." Yeah. So the guy gets up, 
walks into the bar, comes out with four more guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was fun. It was yeah. fun. It was fun. It was fun. They were all nice guys. Oh, excellent. That really? One, uh, that, that one big guy that was pretty drunk. Yeah, he was snot. Good hey, listen, thing. we hey. had a blast. Me too. You Add too. to our viewers Me and listeners, too. thank you so much for all your have support. Have a great week. Uh, we, have, we have some really great stuff coming up over the coming months with the Great American Collectible Show. We're going to make a few changes, all for the better, all for the good. Rico, have a great week. And you too. Louis, have a great week. And to our listeners and viewers, happy collecting. Thank you.